has been a long day and I'm aware of the fact that most of you will probably think, great, now a lawyer comes along and bores us with some legal details, uh, how complicated the world is and informs me with some aspects that I'm not really interested in. But I will try to keep it very short. Uh, in fact, I can actually promise to answer the original question that was addressed to us with just one sentence. Uh, the original question was, I hope you didn't come along for that question, how common are rights relating to content worldwide? Well, if we had to answer that question, the answer would be very common. Uh, thanks to international contracts in almost all countries, copyright is accepted and protects work. Um, so you think, well, a lawyer that answers a question with one sentence, there must be a catch. And of course there is. George and I thought, well, we would probably not represent our profession uh, adequately by answering that question in one sentence. So we uh, figured how we could expand the subject a bit to make it maybe a bit more um, compelling and hopefully uh, also relevant to you. So we agreed upon the, the subject or the issue of what is the legal framework for actually granting rights in a multi-jurisdictional, on a multi-jurisdictional level. Like if you want to grant rights for not just one territory, but across borders. And what are the legal pitfalls for that? While uh, George will focus on United States and if I take it like international aspects, I will just have a look at the European um, territory. What we will probably not address is the if you like, primary question or the most important question, actually, when will a license contract be concluded? Does it, is it sufficient that you just have some metadata in your header to expect that there is actually a license agreement if the other person takes your content, content and then you go along and say, look, I've had some metadata in my header, so now we have a license agreement. Please stick to what I wrote in my header and he will say, no, I don't think so. We've never concluded a contract. So that is a very tricky subject. You know, do you need a tick? Is it sufficient to just inform the user? Do you actually need uh, even a bit more like uh, an express, uh, you know, acceptance of your terms and conditions? Uh, we, we don't want to touch that subject for, for the purpose of this presentation. We should assume that a contract has been concluded and the question here is only what is the framework for actually granting rights in, in a pan-European level. <clears throat> Let's start with the most important information that is unfortunately there's not a harmonized law on the granting <coughs> of rights across Europe. So you have no harmonization of how you actually grant copyrights, how you transfer rights to use your content. It hasn't been harmonized yet, so instead you have several national laws that all differ from one another. That doesn't sound too good because now you would automatically think, well, does that mean now that our technology has to implement all those national laws which would end up in a huge amount of data and you would always have to upgrade it, which makes it rather complicated. Well, let's start with the good news because uh, lawyers are well known for making things too negative. So let's start with the good news. There are some strong similarities between all those European uh, jurisdictions and the legal frameworks on which you could base um, technology on, like techno technical solutions. All member states, or the law in all member states provide that you can, of course, grant rights. That you can transfer rights and that you can either provide an exclusive um, license or a non-exclusive license. And also in most member states, they accept that if the user or the, the licensee doesn't use what he has been licensed, then after a while you can withdraw you know, the granting of the rights so that it falls back to you. Because the, the prime uh, 
target of a contract, a licensing contract is that the licensee actually uses the content. Now, another similarity you can base on is that in general, in all countries, they have a rather restrictive approach when it comes to how much have you actually granted. Meaning that in some states, um, the law stipulates that there is only a transfer of rights if you have expressly mentioned what you actually want to transfer. So you have to outline in detail what aspect you want to transfer, what right you want to transfer, what kind of use you want to allow. And similarly, in other countries, there is this purpose of transfer doctrine, which means, which hasn't been explicitly mentioned, like what you haven't addressed explicitly, that has not been transferred. So you can't um, interpret um, a license contract broadly by saying, well, you have allowed me to, don't know, publishes on website A, so, you know, if I interpret broadly, you mean that you want to allow me to use it on any website, and I have a few other websites, so I will just put them on those websites too. No, there is the, the common approach that you want to save or protect, if you like, the author, so in, in some countries it's called in dubio pro octore, which means like, in case of doubt, the right remains with the author, and what, what you haven't mentioned explicitly stays with the author. That is, of course, important for any technical solution, because it means that rather than granting everything in a very broad sense, like saying you can have everything apart from, and then you write a few restrictions, uh, you should rather, that would be like from top to bottom, you just mentioned what the other person is not allowed. You should rather go from bottom up and, and mention explicitly like what you want to grant, like saying what you are willing to give rather than saying what you're not willing to give. Because that is in line with this approach that you have to uh, make clear what you want to uh, grant, and if you don't, then probably you haven't um, granted that such a right. Now, let's come to the differences, so where the problems are. Um, one big difference is that in some, or in most countries, you can actually transfer the complete copyright, so that you have a new, basically, if you like, a new owner of the copyright, and then the old owner has nothing to do with it anymore. But there are some countries like Germany and Austria where that is not possible. Where basically the author, the, the natural person, will always remain the author. You can only grant rights for the use of your work, but you cannot transfer the whole copyright. That is, of course, relevant if you want a technical solution. You couldn't, for instance, write in your technical solution I transfer my copyright to you and you can do with it whatever you like. In Germany that would be void. You know, even if there is a contract, uh, the law would not accept it. You couldn't enforce it because the law says in Germany you can't transfer your copyright. So that is of course, that would be a pitfall for any such technical solution. Then in some countries, <coughs> the, the contract has to be in writing then the question arises, well, how can you safeguard that? You know, is it sufficient to have a document somewhere that you can download? Or do you always have to have an actual address where you can send the, the document to? But that is not the main problem because even where, that is, where there is such a requirement, usually the contract is still valid. It's just for the purposes of, of basically proving that there has been a contract in the first place. But where, they, where are there real you know, problems? I would say one is the aspect of future forms of exploitation. Um, in most countries, you can basically only grant rights for a type of use of your work that already exists. 
that you are aware of. You cannot say, I grant you the right to do anything you want with my work, no matter what it is in the future. And then five years, along, five years later, a new technology comes up. Let's say a new um, advice where you can use or, or download uh, content. And then the author says, well, if I had known that such new technology comes up, I would never have granted you such a right. So then in some member states, that would still be valid. You know, the licensee could still use the whole content in this new device. Whereas in other countries, that would not be possible. You couldn't, basically, you can't, cannot grant a right for a type of usage you don't know yet. The same applies for future works. So let's say you have a web page where you would have a general disclaimer, any future articles that appear on that web page, I will give you a, uh, a license to use that. You can use anything that I will publish on this site. That wouldn't be possible in some countries because they uh, don't allow you basically to grant rights for works that don't exist yet. So in those countries, you'd have to word it differently and, and you would have to make sure that it, kind of a new license is concluded once this new work has been published. So in general, I, I would recommend to focus on the similarities between those various jurisdictions. And as I said, the recommendation would be a, a bottom-up approach, try to be very precise in defining what you want uh, to grant and the more precise you are, the, the less problems you will probably have in a, a pan-European uh, approach. Thank you.